the Commonwealth of Nations as an organisation actually does a whole heap of good things that we barely ever hear about. Um, and part of the reason for that is because it just gets crowded out by the royals with uh, helping Commonwealth members with the democratic process and ensuring that you know, elections are run smoothly and fairly. Voted as if it's something to do with the royals and, you know, the, the Queen's turned up at uh, wherever it is, Marlborough House in central London and met with the Secretary General. And Hi everyone. So that was Lewis Holden talking about how perceptions of the Commonwealth are distorted by its association with the Royals. Lewis made these comments on our podcast and it struck me as a really interesting point, so it's worth looking at the Commonwealth more closely. The Commonwealth of Nations is a voluntary association of independent states, unlike the British Empire, of course, that preceded it. It was established in 1949 to replace the British Commonwealth, which was a much more limited institution created in the 1920s as an umbrella for the UK and its dominions such as Canada, Australia and New Zealand. In 1949, member states declared themselves to be free and equal. Most member states are former colonies of the British Empire, but not all of them. At the moment, there are 54 countries in the Commonwealth, from major industrialised nations like the UK and Canada, to small developing countries like Guyana, and island nations like Kiribati, Nauru and Samoa. Membership is voluntary, and a number of countries have left and rejoined. Ireland left, never to return and Zimbabwe left and is now seeking to rejoin. Other countries looking to join the Commonwealth include South Sudan, Suriname, Burundi and as yet unrecognised Somaliland. The combined population of the Commonwealth's member states is 2.4 billion people. 1.2 billion live in India. 95% of the Commonwealth population live in Asia and Africa. Of the 54 member states, the Queen is head of state of 16, including the UK. Five members have their own monarchies and the remaining 33 are republics. Now the Queen is head of the Commonwealth but only really on paper. It is an international organisation led collectively and jointly by its members with a secretariat running the organisation day to day led by the Secretary General. The 16 nations who still have the Queen as head of state are mostly small nations in the Caribbean and Pacific as well as Australia, New Zealand and Canada and of course the UK. These countries are known as Commonwealth realms. Excluding the UK, the population of the realms is 80,519,000, or just 3.3% of the Commonwealth's total population. The monarchy has little relevance in the Commonwealth, and I suspect our perception that they are almost inseparable has to do with two things. Firstly, the way the Commonwealth is covered in the UK, and our news bias towards the larger, predominantly white nations of Australia, New Zealand and Canada. Yet despite representing so few of its citizens, the Queen has long been lobbying to ensure her son, Prince Charles, takes on the role of Commonwealth head when she dies or steps down. In an extraordinary act of blatant nepotism, she even put national leaders on the spot in 2018 when addressing the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. It is my sincere wish that the Commonwealth will continue to offer stability and continuity for future generations. And we'll decide that one day the Prince of Wales should carry on the important work started by my father in 1949. And it worked. ...who confirmed tonight what will happen when the Queen is no longer able to do the job. Today we have agreed that the next head of the Commonwealth shall be His Royal Highness Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales. And this is the news, eclipsing the real work and purpose of the Commonwealth and reducing it to an imperial hangover nobly led by British royals. So the Commonwealth's purpose is determined by its member states and they currently list environmental protection, trade and economic development, democracy, young people and women's rights and support for small nations as the areas they work in. Now it's easy to be cynical about the Commonwealth. Over the years a number of Commonwealth nations have been ruled by quasi or actual dictators Two nations, Brunei and Iswatini, formerly Swaziland, are still absolute monarchies and many continue to suffer human rights abuses and significant shortcomings in their democracies. But the Commonwealth is at least attempting to promote the right values and support national moves towards sustainable democracies and free and peaceful societies. The Commonwealth has its critics, but it is a club other nations want to join. Its existence and future have nothing to do with the Queen or the British monarchy, and increasingly it has little to do with the UK it would survive our departure. The UK is one of 54 member states. Our population is just 2.5% of that of the total Commonwealth. The 16 realms, just 3.3%. So here's an idea. Why don't we remove the royals from the Commonwealth altogether? Why? 
so we can see it for what it is, celebrate its successes and congratulate those who are actually responsible and have a serious debate about its failings and its future. So let's talk about the real Commonwealth, not the fantasy of a club of nations united only by an allegiance to the British monarch. So that's it from me for now. Don't forget, if you do enjoy the YouTube channel, please do subscribe and share the videos. That makes sure that we get a much wider audience and we get our message out to more and more people right around the country and around the world. Please do support Republic by going over to republic.org.uk where you can join, donate or get involved so that we can carry on making more of these videos, challenging the monarchy and promoting the cause of a British Republic. Bye for now. While you're deciding which video to watch next, don't forget you can ask questions, make comments or give me your suggestions for new episodes. Just email youtube at republic.org.uk and I'll do my best to answer you either in the comment section or on a future program. Oh, and the one on the left is good. Watch that one.